I just want to say thank you for inviting me uh, to join you this evening, or, well, it's evening here in the UK. Um, the situation in Gaza is horrific, as we know, according to the latest Euromed monitor, more than 100,000 Palestinians in Gaza have been killed, wounded, or are missing under rubble. 32,000 are dead, three quarters of them women and children. Children are dying of heart attacks because of the fear, stress, and sleep deprivation. Many of those wounded have suffered horrific injuries. 10 children a day are undergoing amputations without anesthetics. Israeli war crimes abound, collective punishment, deprivation of food, water, and fuel, forced transfer, the bombing of schools and hospitals, even those run by the UN, blocking and attacking medics and ambulances trying to reach the wounded, summary executions and the public humiliation of prisoners, the use of white phosphorus, which can be burned, which can burn through bone on populated areas, as confirmed by Amnesty International, the targeting of journalists and their families, killing more journalists in 100 days than died in the whole of World War II, and much more, the shooting of three Israeli men waving white flags and calling out in Hebrew raises terrifying questions about what Israeli ground forces must be doing to unarmed Palestinians. And the blockade of vital supplies is about to take an even more terrible toll. 80% of the world's people, uh, of the world's people suffering the most acute um, starvation are now living in Gaza, according to the Action Against Hunger. And the World Health Organization has warned that disease is about to pose a bigger threat to life in Gaza than bombs and bullets. Israel has made its intentions very clear. Genocide and ethnic cleansing as South Africa showed powerfully in its case uh, before the International Court of Justice last week. Yet our UK government put its name to a genocide accusation seven weeks ago against Myanmar for its treatment of Rohingya children, both the UK government and our His Majesty's official opposition, the Labour Party, continue, continue to support Israel's actions, not just with words, but with military support. Even bombing Yemen without parliamentary approval to try to prevent it limiting shipping to Israel. And while dropping bombs on Yemen, UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has claimed that South Africa's application to the, I, to the International Court of Justice endangers peace and is completely unjustified, therefore, and wrong. Despite the relative one-sided media coverage in the UK, the latest polling suggests that more than three quarters of British voters believe there should be an immediate ceasefire in Gaza a level of support that varies little, no matter which party they supported. Yet the government and His Majesty's official opposition, the Labour Party, both worked to defeat a parliamentary motion calling for a ceasefire that I and others voted for. The UK's political establishment is directly at odds with the will of the electorate and has tried to quell public anger by talking about humanitarian pauses and with claims to support a two-state solution, even though Israel's ambassador to the UK has flatly rejected ever allowing Palestinian statehood, instead saying that flattening Gaza is the only viable solution. So we've seen that Israeli newspaper Haratz has pointed out the deep-rooted anti-Semitism that drove uh, the Balfour Declaration that led to the founding of Israel with leading figures hoping to rid Britain uh, of its Jewish citizens. And as the nation responsible for that declaration, which led to the founding of modern Israel, the UK has a particular responsibility to do everything it can to resolve the catastrophe in Palestine and end the slaughter and forced transfer of two million people. Yet our political class has not only abdicated that responsibility, but it's actively fueling 
what Israeli ministers have boasted is a new Nakba. As a member of parliament, I am absolutely appalled at the levels of complicity and apologism that I see around me, heartened only uh, by the clear, uh, the clear mass public solidarity and outcry in the UK and around the world. I stand with those who are protesting. I attend the marches every week here in the UK. The, the UK public uh, outcry is clear. And I stand by, by the spirit and resilience of the Palestinian people. I will continue to do everything I can in my power to change the bad and support the good. We're talking about essentially what Israel is doing is a war against humanity. The people that come onto our streets week in, week out in the UK, I believe are on the right side of history. They are challenging this war against humanity and really standing up to the inhumanity that they are witnessing. Thank you for your time and solidarity.